it's really hot in this onesie. It's a bad choice. It was a bad choice, Kaya. Phew. Hot. Hot. Hot, hot. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to... Whoop. Welcome back to my channel. I am here today to do my top 10 books of 2017 video. I do one of these every year because I think it's fun to just remember and reminisce about all of my favorite books that I read. So without further ado, I'm going to jump in to my top 10 books. So these are in no particular order. I'm just going to throw them out as I see them on my list because organization is for fools. Am I right? So number one on my list is A Dog's Purpose by W. Bruce Cameron. I read this book. It was one of the first books that I read in 2017 and I Oh, I loved it. So many emotions. Basically, it's about this dog. Actually, it's about many dogs, but this dog who every time they die, they come back to life as a new dog. And the dog is constantly trying to find what its purpose is and finds out that maybe its purpose is actually different with each dog that it turns into. This is such a good book. It made me laugh. It made me cry. And I feel like the way that W. Bruce Cameron portrays dogs. Um, hold on. I'm taking my socks off because I'm way too hot. Excuse me. BRB. Okay. So the way that he writes from the point of view of a dog makes you actually think that like that is what a dog would be thinking. So very well done. That is probably one of my favorites. Like that would be top three for me for sure. Take a minute to appreciate the kitten. The kitten. Boop, boop, boop. Number two on my list is Small Great Things by Jodi Picoult. This book, another one that is super emotional. Essentially, it is about a African-American nurse. She works for in the maternity ward or with like the nursery and the babies and all that stuff. And she ends up having this patient who comes in, who's giving birth, who they're like neo-Nazis, this couple, a couple of, just a couple of Nazis coming in. They ask the hospital to not allow this nurse to touch their baby or to touch them or do anything with them. And basically the nurse ends up alone in a room with this baby who then has some kind of a complication and he dies, even though she's been told that she is absolutely not to touch this baby, she still tries to save him. And basically the parents are like suing her and the hospital and the story just kind of builds from there. It is just, it's such a good story. It's a very important story, something that to this day is still relevant, which it should not be relevant. We all know this. I hope that we all know that. It's a very emotional story. It's an impactful story. I highly recommend you read it. And I should just say all of the books that I'm talking about are all five out of five star reads for me, but obviously because they're my favorites. Number three on my list is My Not So Perfect Life by Sophie Kinsella. I just love Sophie Kinsella. I love her so much. Reading her books is like watching romantic comedies. It's just, it's so enjoyable and they're fluffy and they're fun and they're cute and they're romancy. I also listen to this one on audiobook. I pretty much always read her books via audiobook because they are so much better. Her narrators are amazing and the story just comes to life when you hear it instead of reading it. So basically this one is about, it's been a while since I read it, so the details are a little bit foggy, but basically she works in this office and ends up bumping into like the big boss in the elevator, although she doesn't at first know who he is. And she is like from this little small town and she's trying to fit in in this big city world and change herself to fit in. Anyway, so she basically ends up getting let go um, and then she has to go back home to her farm to live and to help her family with their farm and they're like they're doing glamping is kind of the big project that they're working on. So basically she goes home and then this big boss, it's hard to explain and I feel like I'm giving too much away and also not explaining it very well. It is just like a romantic comedy, you know, woman, man, do they fall in love? I don't know. They probably do. Number four on my list is The Selection by Kira Cass. I have had this book and this series on my shelf for years and I just read it finally for the first time this year and I loved it. It's not that it's like written amazingly well, it's just that this book was like pure entertainment. I was so in love 
with this book and the characters that I could not put the book down. Like I picked it up and I just zoom, I read it and then immediately read the second and the third book, which is also something that I like never ever do. So that means that I must have really liked it. I'm sure a lot of you know what this book is about. Basically it follows this girl America and she enters this competition to become the princess bride. First book follows kind of the selection process and her getting into this competition and her relationship with the other girls as well as with the prince. So basically this is like the bachelor and young adult novel form. It's very entertaining. Don't go into this book expecting it to be like a literary masterpiece. It's just, it's not. But it's fun and it's cute and I liked it. The next one, which I think is number five, I'm kind of getting lost now, but anyways, is What to Say Next by Julie Buxbaum. I loved this book. If you enjoyed the show Atypical, I feel like you'd really like this book. It follows a character who is on the autism spectrum and he ends up finding this girl that he likes and it's kind of him trying to figure out social cues and trying to figure out like relationships in general like there's some heartbreaking things in here it's kind of sad don't let this cover fool you it looks very summery and fun but it is a bit more of a serious contemporary i don't want to give too much away about it i just think that everybody should read this it is it's just really good i really really liked it the next one which is absolutely like in my top three as well that is the hating game by sally thomas <gasps> this book is like, it's kind of like a Sophie Kinsella book. It is like a romantic comedy that you're reading. I listen to it, great audiobook. Basically, it's about these two people, a man and a woman, and they work in the same office. They have two different bosses, but they do the same job. They're like the executive assistants for these two people who run this company together. And there is a job coming up that they both want, so they like go after, each go after it. They hate each other and they're constantly like ripping each other apart and making fun of each other and it is just such a fun book it is so good if you love contemporary if you love to have fun while you read read this book you will not be disappointed if this ever gets turned into a movie i am all over it next one on my list is misery by stephen king kind of just like whew, went in a totally different direction this was my first ever Stephen King novel and I'm really really glad that I picked this as my first one. A lot of his books are like big honkers. This one is like a normal sized book. Basically Misery is a story of this author who gets into this car accident and is saved, rescued by this woman who lives alone in this farmhouse and she turns out to be like his number one fan. Like swim fan status. Crazy. So she ends up taking him into her house and taking care of him, but actually all she's doing is like abusing him and making him worse and getting him hooked on these painkiller drugs. And the story is just about him being in captivity and kidnapped by this woman and him in his pain and with his addiction and all of these horrible, insane things that uh, the, what's her name? Annie Wilkes, that is who captures him and basically I'm not going to say anything more about it because there are twists and turns and crazy things happen. It is an intense book. It is gruesome. It's not scary in your typical like boo kind of sense. Like it's not like that, but it, it it's just like at your core makes you feel uncomfortable. So good. If you're thinking about starting Stephen King, start with that one. Highly recommend. The last two I have are actually Christmas books, which I know is kind of crazy to put them on your top list, but I love them both. So the first one is A Boy Called Christmas by Matt Haig, and this is a middle grade book about a boy named Nicholas who, of course, ends up being Saint Nicholas, who ends up being Santa Claus. So it's the story of how he becomes Santa. His father leaves him and goes off onto this journey to find the elves, to find Elfhelm, which is where all of the elves live, to prove that they're real and to capture them and win a bunch of money or get a bunch of money. Nicholas decides that he is going after his father because he doesn't want to stay home with his crazy aunt. And then he stumbles upon a reindeer um, and then he ends up with the elves and the elves aren't what he expects they aren't what anybody expects they're actually like all mean and grumpy and they think happiness is horrible There's a lot of things that happen it's just like this magical and fun story that you anybody can enjoy any age if you are looking for a good book to read next christmas that is like just embodies the magic of christmas then i highly recommend that one and i listened to the audiobook 
It's phenomenal. It's read by Stephen Fry, who I think he does some of the Harry Potter books. Very, very good. And then finally, my last favorite book of the year is The Dogs of Christmas by W. Bruce Cameron. So I've got two of his books on here. And this one is a Christmas story about this man who he's recently broken up with his girlfriend and his neighbor ends up needing to leave the country and he has this dog who's pregnant and he kind of forces it upon this guy and he's like, I don't know anything about dogs. Yeah, I can help. So anyways, he gets stuck with this dog who he doesn't know how to take care of. Then he gets stuck with a bunch of puppies, which he also doesn't know how to take care of. And then he ends up getting very attached to all of the, the dog and all of the puppies. It's just a story of this man and these dogs and helping him to discover things about himself that he didn't know. And it's just such a good book. Like, I just love W. Bruce Cameron's writing style. Like, I want to read everything that he puts out. Everything. I love it. Love him. So I miscounted and I actually do have one more book left. But my final favorite book of the year is Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. I'm sure, like I said before, you guys probably know already everything about this book, but it follows three sisters who are kind of separated at a certain age. So they each kind of have different powers or they're each sent into these different areas to learn these powers. So one of them focuses on poison, um, a poisoner queen. One of them focuses on nature. Is it like a naturalist? So that's like they have animals who they can like talk to and stuff like that. Third one is elemental, which is obviously like the elements. So basically the three sisters have to come together at their birthday and like they have this big feast and festival and then they after that have like a year to kill each other off and whoever survives can then become the queen. So this is the first part of the story. It is going to be a trilogy. This book, it's so good. I knew I was going to like it, but I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. Although I should have known because I love Kendar Blake. I, I really enjoy her writing and her books. I'm really excited to see where the story goes, but yeah, that is number 10. Alrighty, so those are my top 10 favorite books of the year. My top three, like I said, would be A Dog's Purpose, The Hating Game, and I would have to put Small Great Things as my third. I think those three were amazing. Read them. Read them all. Read all the books. They are all good. Let me know down below what your favorite book was of 2017. I would love to know. Um, but yeah, so that's all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe, and I hope to see you again soon.